drugs, and all the other personal health problems. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. ...of a congressional bill that would allow millions more guns into this country and the 20th anniversary of the death of Elvis Presley. You may be surprised there is new information about the end of the king's life. It was 20 years ago this summer that Elvis Presley died unexpectedly, the king of rock and roll, a poor boy with a huge appetite for fame, fortune, and whatever else made him feel good as he transformed American popular music and made his name synonymous with excess. Tonight, NBC's Bob Fall has new information on what brought on the death of the man who became a legend. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. He was so bloated, his lifestyle so dissolute. When he died, millions blamed drugs, but medical records only recently disclosed show drugs did not kill Elvis Presley. Author Peter Brown studied the records for a new book. Elvis Presley died from a heart attack, a massive heart attack. Memphis physician Dan Brokoff reviewed the records and agrees. I think there's a lot of evidence to say that he did have chronic medical problems. The records show Presley had heart disease, hypertension, insomnia, the arteries of an 80-year-old man, and enlarged colon and terrible constipation. Because of his use of the steroids for his bowels, he suffered a lot of compression fractures in his spine. The young Presley used drugs for recreation. The older Presley needed them for pain. He was essentially steroid dependent and he, he was Demerol dependent. Dr. George Nicopoulos, who began treating Presley in 1967, hospitalized him three different times to break his addiction, once even put him on methadone. Then the man Elvis called Dr. Nick started a new regimen. We gave him an appetite suppressant. Give him hormones? Occasionally. And occasionally Lasix? That's a diuretic. And give him something for pain. Uh, Sometimes something to help the itching from the costume? Yeah. And then to get to sleep for the insomnia, you'd give him? Sleeping pills of one sort or another. Dr. Nick insists that new combination broke Presley's addiction. He wanted to be drug free? Yeah. He ever tell you that? Sure, yeah. Here in the town where he died, that new medical appraisal that Elvis was a victim of chronic disease is a distinctly minority view. Many still believe he was a victim of chronic lifestyle. Two years ago, Tennessee stripped Dr. Nick of his license, said he'd given too many drugs to others. This is malpractice. But his controversial treatment of Elvis is now seen in a different light. Dr. Nick gave him the most minimal drugs he could. 20 years later, controversy continues over Presley's death, but his fans say since he was fighting serious medical problems, any stigma which lingers is unfair. People call, you know, talking about his obesity and things like that. Like I said, here's a guy with a fractured spine, needing steroids, not feeling good, and going out there and being Elvis Presley for you. That, that's, that's something special. Addicted to fame and pleasing his fans, he put his image first, his health second. He was trapped being Elvis, and it probably killed him. Bob Fall, NBC News, Memphis. That's how it is for this Monday. It's night on Dateline. Celebrities and sheriffs.